Assalamu alaikum. Let us start our lesson with a dua. Allahumma inni as'aluka ilman nafi'a wa rizqan tayyiba wa amalan mutaqabbala. Before we continue with part 2 of Numbers and Isim, we take a moment to recap what we learned last week. We know that number is one of the four grammatical characteristics of Isim and we discussed the topic of gender in lesson 5. Last week, we also learned that all Isim can be transformed from the singular to the dual form using one common method and that is by adding the suffix ani or aini. So, when we see any isim which ends with ani or aini, that word is most likely an isim muthanna which means two of whatever that object is. Alright, we're now ready to start part two of the lesson. We'll be learning more about isim jama, plural nouns, which in Arabic means three or more. How do we change any isim from singular to plural form? In English, the most frequently used way is to add the letter S to the end of the word. One cat, many cats. Or change the end of the word from the letter US to the letter I. One cactus, many cacti. And sometimes, for some reason, we even change the vowels. One goose, many geese. Similarly, in Arabic, there is no one simple common method which can be applied for all isim. There are in fact three types of plurals in Arabic and each type is to be handled differently. Let's study the first type of isim jama which is called the jama muzakar salim or sound masculine plural. As a rule, most masculine singular nouns which relate to human or human traits can be changed to the plural form by adding the suffix una or ina. We will use the word Muslim as an example. Muslim also means a man who submits to God. To change this word from mufrod, singular, to jama, plural, we simply add una or ina to the end of the word. Both the words muslimuna and muslimina mean three or more Muslim men. But when do we use the word muslimuna and when do we use muslimina? That depends on the original singular form, whether it ends with dhamma, muslimun, with kasroh, muslimin, or with fatha, musliman. This involves ikrob which is a topic we will discuss in the coming lessons. Look at the letters mim, sin, lam and mim in all three words. Other than the ikrab in the singular form, which is the ending of the second mim in that word, all these letters do not change in terms of hatha, kasroh, boma, no sukun, and the letters remain intact, with no new letters added in between those four letters. These letters are not broken up. They are safe and sound. Hence, we call this type of jama, jama muzakar salim. Muzakar because it's derived from singular muzakar or singular masculine isim. And salim because it's sound. The letters are not broken up and remain intact. Salim in Arabic means safe. However, I need to highlight that not all isimuzakar or masculine nouns can be converted to the plural form in this manner. This formula only works on nouns which describe human. It cannot be applied to animals and inanimate objects. Here are some examples of jama muzakar salim. Some isim can have more than one plural form. For example, the word kafir. There are two forms of plural for that word in the Qur'an. One form is the jama muzakar salim, kafiruna kafirina, and the other is a plural word we will be learning later in this lesson. 
Now we'll move on to the second group of plural named Chama Mu'anas Salim, sound feminine plurals. Most isim mu'anas mufrod or singular feminine nouns ending with tamad buta can be converted to plural by changing the tamad buta to the letters alif mad and ta. Let's use the word muslima as an example. Muslima means a Muslim woman. To change this word from one Muslim woman to jama, meaning three or more, we can just remove the term buta and add the suffix atun or atin. Both the words muslimatun and muslimatin means many Muslim women. So, what's the difference between muslimatun and muslimatin? Just like before, the use of muslimatun or muslimatin depends on the ikrab of the original singular word, whether it ends with Boma, Muslimatun, Kasroh, Muslimatin, or Fathah, Muslimatan. All these we will delve in greater detail in the coming lesson on Iqrab. If we look at the letters Mim, Sin, Lam, and Mim in the plural form compared to the singular, these letters are not changed in any way. They are sound, Salim in Arabic. Therefore, we call plural nouns which are created by adding atun or atin at the end of the word like this, jama mu'annas salim. Mu'annas because it's derived from feminine singular nouns which ends with tamar butoh and salim because it's sound. The letters are not broken up and the vowels fatha, kasra, doma remain unchanged. I've selected a few Jama Mu'ana Salim words which frequently appear in the Qur'an as examples. However, do take note that not all Isim Mu'annas ending with Tamar Buta can be changed to the plural form using this method. The third and final type of Isim Jama or plural noun is Jama Taksir, broken plurals. We've learned that isim muzakar mufrod or singular masculine nouns can be changed to the plural form by adding the suffix una or ina. And that isim mu'annas mufrod or singular feminine nouns are transformed to plural by changing the tamar buta into the suffix atun or atin. But not all nouns are as easy as this. Many plurals are not derived using these two formulas. And to accommodate this, there is a third group of plurals called Jama Taksir. However, there is no one common method to forming Jama Taksir. We need to refer to an Arabic dictionary to ascertain the plural of the word. Let's use the word Kitabun as an example. Kitabun means a book. Jama of Kitabun is Kutubun. If we compare the letters Kaf, Ta, Alif and Ba in the singular word to the letters in the plural form, we can see that the Kasra of Kaf and the Fatha of Ta have changed to Doma and the letter Alif has disappeared altogether. They have been broken up, taksir in Arabic, hence the name Jama Taksir. The following are examples of Jama Taksir which appear in the Quran. We can see that Jama Taksir isn't limited to Isim Muzakkar only. Words such as Umun and Nakjatun are Mu'anas or feminine nouns, and the Jama of these words are Jama Taksir. Look at the word kafir here. Earlier we learned that kafiruna and kafirina are the jama uzakar salim of that word. But the word kufar is also a plural form of kafir. So we can see that a noun can have more than one plural form. Another example is the word nabiyun. 
it has two plurals anbiya from the jama taksir form and nabiyuna nabiyina from jama muzakkar salim to summarize what have we learned today there are three types of isim jama or plural nouns the first is isim muzakkar salim which are formed by adding the suffix una or ina as in the words muslimuna and muslimina do take note that jama muzakkar salim must be human related it cannot be applied to animals or inanimate objects the second group is jama muannas salim formed by changing the term marbuta in the singular isim to the suffix atun and atin just like in the word muslimat and the third group is jama taksir the formation of jama taksir does not follow one simple rule like the other two groups at this early stage the only way we can know what the plural of the word is is by referring to a dictionary And how do we recognize the plural words when we are reading the Quran? If this isim ends with una or ina, it's a jama muzakkar salim, and we know that the word must be human related. If the word ends with atun or atin, it's a jama muannas salim. There isn't any simple way to identify jama taksir at this beginner level, because it looks similar to a regular singular noun. All right. I hope you understood today's lesson. Feel free to ask me any questions or provide feedback. And if I can't answer them, I'll try to ask my ustas. We'll end this lesson with a dua. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdika ashhadu an la ilaha illa anta astaghfiruka wa atubu ilaik.